If you're looking for an affordable video camera, well then you've probably heard of Blackmagic. And today they might have one of the best value cameras they've ever released. And I'm about to unbox it, the Blackmagic 6K Pro. So let's see, whoa. The pocket is also still in the name, but I have a feeling that this camera isn't actually going to be very small. Okay, so in the top of the box, we get a nicely arranged bunch of international adapters. We get a little quick start guide with the manual, which is online. You can get it on the QR code here. A wall adapter for the camera. So if you ever need to plug it in for like live streaming or just a long shoot or an interview or something like that, you have this included. And this camera, which is awesome, uses the Sony NP550 battery. So if you've ever used like one of those onboard LED lights or honestly, a lot of just camera accessories in general, most of them will use a battery like this, like monitors, that kind of thing. So it's nice that you could probably just reuse your small versions of these batteries in this camera. And a camera strap, okay. Oh, this is thick. Wow, you know what? I will hand it to you, Blackmagic. Your packing material is always very good. Wow, okay. Holy crap, this thing is huge. Okay. Notice on the box, it says Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. I understand the naming. I understand that the this version, this tier of the camera has always been called the Pocket. No, it should be a backpack. <laughs> but for some context, I have here the original Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera. Notice that if I took this lens adapter off, and I have a jacket pocket right here, it actually fits in my pocket. This is the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Now again, not a small camera. Like it's packable, it still sort of deserves the pocket name. It doesn't, it's not pocketable, but this is another level. Like this is the original Blackmagic. I swear this camera's bigger. Yeah, it is. Blackmagic, what are you doing? You could have named it slightly differently. Okay, let's look at the rest of this camera and see what actually makes it different from the Pocket 4K that I just showed. Um, first thing, right off the bat, you can see that the display is now tiltable, which honestly, even though the motion range doesn't seem to be that significant, it's gonna be very useful for a lot of you out there, especially if you're shooting from the hip and you just need to see downward, instead of like having to have any sort of external monitor, the display itself can actually just flip down for you and now you can shoot from the hip quite comfortably. But on top of that, this display is actually 1500 nits, so you get HDR daylight viewability on the camera itself, which is something that Blackmagic cameras haven't done before because all the displays on all the other cameras kind of suck to use outside and you sort of have to use an external monitor. This one though, you're not forced to. On the top of the camera, it feels fairly familiar. It's the three mappable function buttons, an on off switch, a little tab where you can actually unlock it and put an EVF in. I'll show that you that in a second. The ISO button, a shutter button, white balance, a stills button, and then the record button. On the right of the camera, pretty straightforward. We have the memory slots, which are CFast and an SD card. And then of course you can also use like Samsung T5 drives on this camera. It has on the front, the amazing Blackmagic 6K sensor that I've actually yet to try because I've never used the Pocket 6K, the standard Pocket 6K, and this is the Pro. So I'm excited to give that a shot in a second. You clearly have much larger intakes of air on the right and left here of the camera sensor. The front of the top of the camera has a quarter 20, which is fairly standard. And on the left of the camera, we've got microphone, headphone, a full-size HDMI, Type-C for charging, as well as the Samsung T5 drives, and two mini XLR ports. Now, the Pocket actually only had one, and the 6K, that was also the case. But on this camera, you get two mini XLR ports, which is a big deal because 
Often, if you need audio built into your camera and you need to feed it through, you will probably find yourself in situations where you need more than one XLR port, and this camera has two. And you also have the 12 volt power in when you want to power the camera off the wall. Finishing off the back of the camera, we've got two new buttons, the plus and minus ND filter, which this camera has a two, four, and six stop ND, which is very nice to have. We've got the iris button, the focus button, high frame rate, punch in to check your focus, menu, and play. And lastly, and I'm very glad Blackmagic added this because their other cameras, the other pocket cameras do not have this, but on the bottom of the camera, there are two quarter 20s. With two points on the bottom built in the body, you are not required to have a cage in order to prevent the annoying twist that can happen when the camera loosens off on the tripod. And that just makes every operator happier. So thank you, Blackmagic, for adding that. Before I turn the camera on, I actually want to unbox a couple of the accessories that Blackmagic sent over. They sent over their Battery Pro Grip, which is basically just like a battery grip. And then this is their Pro EVF, which I'm very interested to try. I mean, first impressions, the grip feels a little bit cheap, um, but I guess functionally, it, doesn't necessarily matter. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break or anything. It's just not the nicest kind of plastic. It still also has the two quarter 20 points on the bottom, which I appreciate. Let's put it on the camera and see how it feels. Line this up. Um, so we put the grip on. This camera was already not that light for the size, and it is now very not light for the size. In theory, you can have three full charged batteries in this camera, and the pockets have always been fairly power efficient, but I don't know if it's worth the weight trade-off because the fact that you also have to have the camera about an inch taller could be hugely impractical for a lot of camera accessories. And I really have no, and like because it's not a stills camera, Holding it like this, which is what you would usually do with a battery grip on a camera, feels sort of dumb. Let's see if the EVF is any better. It's actually bigger than I expected. You got a couple eye cups, different styles. I guess it's for like, if you want to use it with your left eye or your right eye, I don't, okay, I'm just gonna use it with my right eye. This is a cinema camera. So let's put a cinema lens on it. This, my friends, is why when you add vertical height to your camera, it's not ideal. You don't really want it to like lean the weight of the camera on the lens. I just hope this illustrates the point that this feels very stupid. I just took off that little cover. This thing is just like a screw and a very quite large piece of plastic. If you look here, so there's quite a bit of depth. The entire front of my fingernail fits within this space, which is actually a lot bigger than I expected. All right, let's put this guy on. Oh, and there's also a hand tighten screw. And it's a plastic like top handle for the screw, which I am not a fan of. How much is this EVF? $500? Black magic. Let's see how good it is. Well, it works quite instantaneously, that's nice. It's not the worst EVF I've ever used. $500 seems a little bit steep to charge for it. It also doesn't fully go vertical, which isn't, I guess, a huge deal. The last thing though is the color doesn't actually match the back of the LCD on the camera. So without looking at it on a computer, I'm actually not sure which one of them is accu more accurate than the other. I would guess that the LCD on the actual body is better and more accurate than this because the EVF seems a little bit on the shallow side. Andy is back there shaking his head because he has no faith in the Blackmagic displays because the Ursa Mini 12Ks have proved to be quite horrible on the onboard camera display. Now that we've looked at the grip and the EVF, only a couple things left to test, the new NDs and this new display. Let's go outside. So now we're outside and you guys will probably start to see what I meant by when you add vertical height to a camera, 
it's less than ideal. This is the battery grip with it mounted properly with the two screws in the bottom on the tripod and it's tall. <laughs> also, because the camera doesn't have a cold shoe or hot shoe mount on the body itself, we've had to actually add this cold shoe mount in order to add our lav receiver. And if you didn't have a cage, this might be what you have to do in order to get like a place to mount your lav receiver and audio. And then this is what it might look like to use an XLR adapter cable to this port. So cable management is a little annoying. I mean, and that's kind of one of the things that these pocket cameras have never been amazing at despite all their features is there's not really a great way to route all this stuff with the camera by itself. You will have to add a cage or some sort of cable management to just tidy up the rig so that these things kind of don't get into your way when you're shooting. But if you were just on a tripod doing a long interview with a shot like this, you'd probably be totally fine and it's not a big deal. I will admit though that the back of the camera, when I actually have the brightness 100%, it's kind of a cloudy day today, but the sun is coming in and out and I can see everything on the camera. There is no issues. I don't have to squint and look like, I don't have to cover the, like 1500 nits. It's impressive. This is definitely daylight viewable and that's pretty awesome. So just to give you guys an idea of what it's like to use the NDs outside, here's the camera with zero ND and this is the two stop, this is the four stop, and the six stop. And in this case, in this shooting condition, I think the six stop makes the most sense since we're at ISO 200 and F2.8. This camera does have a 6K sensor and it's the same sensor that was in the Pocket 6K. And so it can shoot up to 50 FPS at 6K or up to 120 FPS at 2.8K. Now at 2.8K at 120 FPS, you do have to crop in on the sensor so you will lose some field of view on your image. But other than that, those specs are still today fairly respectable. So while we actually test the image on the Pocket 6K Pro and we're actually feeding audio from this lab that I'm wearing directly into the camera, forgive the wind noise because we are outside and it's a little bit windy right now, a word from our sponsor, PIA. PIA is the easy to use VPN that allows you to access services and websites as if you were in a different country. It encrypts all of your internet traffic and uses a safe protected IP. Connect up to 10 devices at once, clients for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Linux. Buy a one year plan for $39.95 at the link in the video description. So this is what the image looks like when we're outside with the ND filters on. This is about as bare bones as the setup would actually get. It's just the camera, a lens, the built-in NDs on a tripod. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And let's show you a couple other shots while we're out here. So I hope those examples give you guys an idea of what this camera is like to use. At the end of the day, it's still the same 6K sensor that they used in the Pocket 6K, the, the model previous. And it just adds the built-in NDs, the 1500 nit display, the extra XLR port, and a couple of the other body changes that just make it a more pro experience. And they deliver all of that at $2,500. To give you guys context, Canon C70 is $5,500. The A7S III is $3,500. The Sony FX6 is $6,000. The Canon C200, which is a couple of years old at this point, $5,500. A used FS5 Mark II is $3,500. Now, just, I told you all that to put in perspective that this camera is $2,500 cheaper than all of those, and it has very similar functionality. There are features that it doesn't have compared to those cameras, but considering Blackmagic always has been at the bottom of good value, now you pay for QC and form factors like this when it comes to those features. But if you're the type of person looking for those things all in one camera at a price point that is under $3,500, well, then this is your only option. <laughs> so good job, Blackmagic, sort of. I'm sure there's gonna be many people out there who use this camera. And if you are the type of person who would buy this camera, let me know if you think the battery grip or the EVF would be useful to you because the EVF I can see being useful in certain situations, though sort of an expensive addition. The battery grip, I think that's just kind of stupid. There are better ways to invest 150 US dollars. But let me know. Thank you guys for watching.
please subscribe.